Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today I want to take a look at how we fight in board games, combat systems. Uh, in games, there's a lot of war games out there. There's games that aren't considered war games, but combat can still happen in them, and it's done in a variety of ways. Um, so we're going to just take a look at different things and ways that you fight in combat systems. Now, the, the number one thing that's used in these games, by far, is dice. So let's take a look at dice first. One of the most common is used in the game of Risk. In Risk, if you've never played it, the attacker can have up to three dice, the defender can have up to two. You simply roll dice and you will compare the highest results. So here the attacker wins and kills one defending unit. Here the defender kills, uh, wins and kills one defending unit. And you can only roll dice if you have enough units, you need at least three units to roll three dice. If you're below three, you can only roll two, etc. It's a very simple system. With the popularity of Risk, we now move on to Axis and Allies, which has a whole series of games based on it. And in this game, you'll have troops that fight each other. And depending on whether you're attacking or defending, the stats might change, but you are simply trying to roll equal to or less than the number. So here, low numbers are better, which was kind of the opposite of risk. And then you'll hit the enemy units. And again, depending on what units you have, you'll have stronger dice for attacking purposes. More complex war games often use what is in shorthand called a CRT, or here a combat results table where you will look at many times, most of the time, it's the odds. So if I'm the attacker and I have two to one odds, I then might roll a six-sided die, and depending on what I roll, something will happen. Now this shows shorthand terms for something that will happen to the units that go on in the game, uh, but the combat result table, they're all gonna be different per war game. Modern war games have tended to shy away from the CRT, but they still can have fairly complex rules. What we're looking at here is a page in Combat Commander Europe, a very popular game, um, and in here you can see that there's gonna be a fire order you're gonna take into account terrain, your distance, and there's a lot of different factors, but it might come down to a single die roll. Sometimes dice are also used with a timing mechanism. This is Nexus Ops, and when you fight here, you're gonna be simply rolling six at a dice, and you're, in this case, you're rolling high. It's very similar to Axis and Allies, except the human only hits on a six or higher, so it's high is better, but also when you go through, you'll be moving through, so it's possible some units could get killed before they even have a chance to hit. So uh, the Rubium Dragon might go before the Rock Strider. So you think about the percentages of what you'll have to shoot and hit back with. Dungeons and Dragons introduced a new way to use dice, and this was with the D20 combat system, although this system is used in quite a few games. So in this case, and this is in the board game, The Legend of Drist, Dungeons and Dragons, but when you're attacking, let's say I was attacking this dwarf, they have an AC, an armor class of 16, and I would need to roll higher than that on a 20-sided die. But most of the time when you are attacking, you'll have some sort of uh, card or some sort of ability that might give me a plus seven. So now I only need a nine to hit on that. And this system was used in many different games, not just Dungeons and Dragons, but a lot of different board games, and even games like Battletech, the miniatures games, would use dice with modifiers based on how fast the mech was moving, how high elevation you were, how good the gun was that you were using, how far away the enemy was. And so many times these combats, and there's a lot of board games, that will use a single die with a bunch of modifiers. Games like to use different sided dice. Most games use six-sided dice. After that, you see a lot of 20-sided, perhaps 10-sided. In a game like this one here, Battle Ball, the different uh, characters will use dice for their speed. So the character with the red base here would use this 20-sided die, which allows him to move very fast. But then in combat, you would roll but let's say the red player was fighting the yellow one. The yellow moves very slowly, but the lower number wins the combat. So here, red rolled a nine, yellow rolled a six, yellow wins that combat. So they might be slow, but because of the differential in dice, they're also stronger. Some games use dice for both 
attacking and defending. And sometimes they have numbers on them, sometimes pictures. A very good example of this is the classic game HeroScape, which when you attack someone, you get a certain number of attack dice, maybe four. So there I just roll two hits. The defender gets three. They block one of those hits. And these dice are used. So there's an attack on three sides. There's defense on two of the sides. And the game originally came with two different dice, and they eventually realized you could put the symbols on the same dice and use them. But this pictorial thing helps a lot when fighting. This has even bled into miniatures game, the very popular game. X-Wing uses attack and defensive dice where you're trying to roll hits and because of symbols they can make some hits critical hits and then the defensive person is trying to block them or avoid them but you'll also find symbols here that can be turned into blocks or defenses based on special abilities. So when you start putting pictures on dice it's a quick representation of what happens and it makes games like X-Wing which normally you might have had to look up those old CRTs, those combat result tables. Now you roll some dice and you know automatically what happens. Memoir 44 and many other modern lighter war games have taken us a step further where when you attack with dice, you simply need to roll the picture of the thing you're attacking. So if these tanks were attacking here, they're trying to roll a tank symbol or this grenade symbol, which is wild. And so there's more, for example, there's more infantry symbols on these dice, so it's easier for men to get shot. But these symbols also are other things, like this might cause a unit to retreat. And again, it's a very simple system, which eliminates the need to look up tables. These dice with pictures on are becoming more and more popular, and you're seeing them used in games. And then interesting things can be done. So for example, in this game here, Arcadia Quest, you will roll, and if you're doing a melee combat, swords hit. If you're doing a ranged combat, bows hit, and shields will block. But they also have these symbols, which means it's an automatic hit or an automatic block, but you get to roll it again. And if you roll the same symbol again, Again, you get to roll it again and if you roll the same symbol again you get to roll it again and you keep doing that until eventually you miss this is called exploding dice and allows combats to be even more exciting and dynamic because there's always a chance having symbols on dice allows dice also to be used for multiple things these are some dice from Imperial Assault which is a Star Wars game and when you're rolling dice you're rolling to get hits on dice but also the dice will show you if your range is far enough. So when you're shooting a range, if I'm four spaces away and I roll these two dice, it hits. And then there's symbols that might cause other things to happen. So these multi-use function dice allow you, you know, for example, if you get a red die, that's going to have a lot of hits on it, while a green die will give you numbers that allow you to shoot farther away and lets you really customize weapons and characters. Then there are games that use dice with a Yahtzee style mechanism. The most popular of them is King of Tokyo, but here's one called Dice Throne, where you roll dice and then you're attempting to match different combos. Like for example, I have three swords. I'm gonna re-roll these and try to get five swords. I did it. Five swords does eight damage to my opponent. But I might have tried to do a different combination on here. And the dice plus the board allow me to do some really cool combos. All right, enough of dice. Dice are not the only way for combat to happen in the games. Many times games use what we call deterministic combat. I mean, this is one that most people know. For example, if I'm playing checkers and I jump over one of your pieces, I capture it. It's removed. That's combat. If I'm in chess and my queen attacks your bishop and takes it out, that's deterministic combat, which is in most abstract strategy games. But it is used in some war games. In some war games, you have three guys. I move them in your territory. You have six. All three of my guys die, and so do three of yours. That's deterministic combat. Nirishima Hex, for example, definitely shows this in the fact that it has tiles. And here combat is done in a variety of different ways because it shows you the speed of the characters um, and it also shows you what direction that they are attacking in. And sometimes you can have things that are blocked. And so this game becomes almost an abstract strategy game as players are placing units knowing how combat is going to happen, but not knowing when it's going to happen. There's a tiny bit of randomness, but in the actual combat itself, it's all determined ahead of time. Deterministic combat by some is found to be boring because there's no luck or randomness in it. 
somewhat of a halfway in between deterministic and randomness is card combat. Now you can always stick a deck of cards in place of dice. There's still randomness, but it's a bit controlled randomness. If I made, for example, a deck that had a card from 2 to 12 for two six-sided dice, that 2 is only going to be drawn 1 out of 36 times if I made a 36-card deck, while with the dice it could happen 6 times or none. Card combat, though, is often very popular with games. Let me show you some examples. One of my favorite games is Cosmic Encounter, in which you will use different cards, sometimes negotiate cards, but often attack cards. A 20 beats a 10, but this game allows you to play other cards that add numbers to these, but you also can use special abilities and other things, and you don't know what card your opponent's going to play. So you're constantly trying to outthink the other player. And so in Cosmic, there's a good chunk of chaos in the game with a deck of cards that everybody's using. And this is maybe the original game that uses card combat coming out 40 years ago. But it's a solid system that is still used in even more modern games like Blood Rage here, where players will play these cards. It might have special abilities on them, and it's also added to the strength of the units that you're fighting with. So in Blood Rage, I might have a monster and a couple other units, but if you play a better card than me, you still might beat me out, but in Blood Rage, you can keep track of perhaps where the cards are that are being used. In Unmatched, each person has a deck of cards, and that deck of cards is customized. So in this Unmatched, which is from the Unmatched Cobble and Fog, we have Dracula vs. Little Red Riding Hood. So this is an attack card and a defensive card, but they also have special abilities. There's also cards that can be used as attack or defense. So the game has randomness and the cards you draw from the deck, but other than that, it's strategy, and once you know your opponent's deck, you have to kind of faint back and forth. And so using cards here is easier, but not still completely deterministic. In Wildlands, players have their own decks, and they'll be using their characters to make ranged or combat attacks, very similar to the dice that have ranged or combat attacks, and then you'll use other cards to block them. So this also has some similarities to Unmatched, but here cards may work for multiple characters. So there's a lot of games that use these cards. This is very similar to Deterministic Combat, but adds in this randomness of drawing cards from your deck. In Kemet, each player has the exact same deck, and they are picking a card when fighting someone else. Again, it adds the units, but these cards have your defense, your attack, and um, how many wounds that you do to somebody. And so you have to guess what card your opponent's going to be playing. So it's kind of a uh, almost a rock, paper, scissors, uh, something that's used in a lot of combat games. But there also is a little bit of randomness with cards that the player might throw in to add to these cards that are being played. It's an excellent combat system. There's also a bit of deterministic combat, but players can change it. This is from the classic game, another 40-year-old game, called Dune, where you're going to pick the number, and whoever plays the higher number wins. You can only use a number equal to the number of troops you have in the battle, but the number that you use is also how many of your troops will die. So you're trying to outthink the other person. And you can also play a character here that adds to it, which is very similar to playing a card. And this combat is not used very often, but it was started back in the original game Dune. The very popular game Scythe does something very similar, which has a wheel, and then this time adds cards that you can use. So I might attack you with zero, but I'm going to add a 3 and a 2 to that for a total of 5. You know how high these cards go. You know the most of the, your military they can use is 7. So again, it's a bit deterministic, but players are not completely sure and have to kind of outguess the other person. Now you will find that most games are going to use dice, deterministic, or card combat. That is the vast majority, although there are all sorts of combinations and tricks you can play on those. But there are a few other weirder, unusual styles of combat. Let me just show you a few of them. In Sleeping Gods, you're using flipping a card for combat, but when you hit the bad guys, you will be putting tokens on them, and they're going to hit you back, so you might want to swing at them so that they don't hit you back as hard, or you might want to hit them where it hurts them more, and it offers some really interesting, unique choices. In Wallenstein, you use what's called a cube tower. So if I have five red cubes attacking three yellow, 
red should win. Well, we'll throw them in here and see what happens. Only three reds came out, so three red did win. But in the future, when you throw in cubes, it might knock out some of the cubes that were already in there. So you can see there's cubes that stay in the tower. So not only does your battle have some odds based on cubes that get stuck in here, but it might affect future battles also. It's a cool system that's used in a few games, mostly designed by Dirk Hen. Some games use flicking as a combat mechanism. This is catacombs where you are flicking discs and when you hit another creature or monster you will do damage, although there's special abilities. Some creatures have small discs they can flick, some creatures can flick multiple times. So it's skilled, there's technically zero luck in the game, but it's based on how good you are at this dexterity element. Then there are games like Rising Sun that combine a whole pile of things where you will be bidding on a system like this where you can hire extra troops, you can take hostages, you can commit seppuku, and all these different things combine to create some event. You know, you start with deterministic numbers like four to three, and then you'll add this stuff in, and you're trying to outguess the other person, but then different things affect other things. It's like a very complicated rock, paper, scissors. Well, there you have it. That is just a smidge of the many, many combat systems that exist out there. And like I said, with dice and cards, the different permutations of how things can be done is immense. And I'm sure there are cool combat systems that we have not seen yet. But hopefully this gives you an idea of the breadth and scope that are out there. What's your favorite way to fight in a game? Was it with cards or with dice or a combination or the flicking dexterity? Let me know underneath. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell and you've been watching The Dice Tower.